you did. I'm about to be. And I believe you guys may be just at there. It's 55. And did you guys can be done. Okay. We on. Good afternoon and welcome, Acadiana. My name is Brenda Andrus, along with Shelly Sonia. How you doing, Shelly? I'm doing fine. How are you? Good, good. Um, I'm with the 4A Sisters. It's a lupus group. We're four sisters, myself, Gail Andrus Lee, Martha Weatherford, Anasia Andrus Sam. We started this 4A Sisters group in 2011. And uh, how did it came about? When I was young, I might say eight years old, my mother passed away at an early age of 30. And she passed away with a disease called lupus. Yes. And uh, leaving my dad with six kids. And my dad remarried to Leo Leroy Andrus and them two had a daughter, and they were married to 40-something years, and her two passed away with the same disease. Mm -hmm. So when my dad passed away, John uh, passed away in August uh, 2011, all of us got together and said, you know what, we need to start doing something about the lupus because it's a silent, nobody talks about it, it's hush-hush, but we wanted to make an awareness group, a support group for the community, and put the word out. And right. um, not knowing you had the same thing, same Shelley. disease for 17 years. Yeah. Yes, and it is um, a, a disease that is an uncurable disease mm -hmm. as of now. Hopefully, they will come up with something. But what lupus is is a chronic disease, and it is a autoimmune disease mm -hmm. where the body is actually, its own defense is fighting against you. Right. So um, what we want to do is um, look out for some warnings. Um, but your defense, b back to how it fights against you, your disease, your autoimmune disease on a normal person, mm -hmm. what that does is it it fights for you, keeps okay. you from getting sick. Okay. Every time there's something that goes wrong in your body, your autoimmune system works for you and tries to protect whatever illnesses you have. Mm -hmm. Now with lupus, it's fighting against your, your autoimmune you know, system is fighting against you. So it's attacking basically all parts of the body. Right. Now there are some, um, symptoms that you're going to start having. There's multiple symptoms right, that lupus right. has. You want to tell us about that also. And that's one of the things um, that needs to be known is what those symptoms are. First, there's fatigue. Okay. You're going to feel tired. You can sleep, um, I don't, you can sleep two days, mm -hmm. wake up and you're still tired. You can go that whole day. I mean, you're just still going to be tired no matter how much, but that is the lupus that is not giving you that rest, I mean, it's fighting against that. And um, so sleep-wise, fatigue is a big one. Another one is pain throughout your body. Okay. Um, there are people that have rheumatoid arthritis. That is a big factor with fibromyalgia. That is another one. And you feel the pain. And most people that have lupus, mm -hmm. a good bit of them have those things, um, rheumatoid arthritis and fibro. And um, so when you start feeling pain, you get up, you're stiff, that's something to think about um, getting checked. Another one is gastro problems. Um, that's one of the big ones actually, where you have, you know, maybe irritable bowel syndrome, okay. um, you know, not being able to eat proper. Um, because one of the things you want to do with lupus is there's no certain diet for lupus, but there are foods that you need to be careful. And you can ask of, your doctor of what kind of food you can eat right, also. Right, exactly. Okay. And, um, and each doctor, and, and another thing that lupus, with lupus you will have multiple doctors. Okay. Um, because there's so many things that go wrong with you. I mean, it could be your heart, it could be your lungs, kidneys. I know that, um, 
I, I have a relative that have kidney disease, but when she goes in there, it, she thought that it was just people with kidney problems, but she found out most of the people that are there on dialysis, they have lupus. So lupus, it attacks the kidneys. Um, so we want to definitely, um, when you start finding you have more than one thing going on with you. With your body. With right. your body. We want to stay in tune with our bodies. Make sure that um, we are, you know, if you're feeling that something is just not right, get to your doctor. And you know, I, I, I went to my doctors yesterday and the day before, and I went to my rheumatologist, and I was explaining to her what was going on, and I had nothing that looked to her that was going wrong, but I had pictures of the swelling in the knees and the, and, and, and the legs, the ankles, basically places that swells when you have flare-ups. Okay. And she told me next time, come in. Well, she's always told me that, but being that I had those pictures. And you wanna take, whenever they do blood work, ask for your blood work. Because one of the things you're gonna have your internal medicine doctor, rheumatologist, maybe a gastrologist, mm -hmm. neurologist, because it does affect the brain as well, wow. a pulmonologist, a heart doctor. You want to always take your ask for your records when you leave. Um, the blood work. I just had blood work done, and I asked, you know, for the month before, and then again when this blood work comes in that they do, because every time I go, I get blood work done. Okay. Um, I ask for that. That way I can take it to my other doctors. And then one doctor is in tune with the other doctor, okay. not one, because those medical records, if you got one doctor doing something and another doctor doing another thing, they don't know what that other doctor is doing. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to be able to bring your medical records. Always ask for those records and um, get that. A little um, note of sharing with the audience also, when you go into the doctors, I understand, have a list of questions Have to a ask. list of questions. You know, be prepared. Exactly. Tell them what happened between that month that you never went the last time. Right. You know, and ask the questions, keep, and ask, keep on asking questions, talk to the doctor. Right. Not just sit there and just go into the doctor, do what they have to do, and then leave, and then you go back home and it's like, got to ask them. You exactly, know? because we're not going to remember right. when so we get to the doctor. So you want to always, you, you, you may want to have a little journal to where you can write down the things Correct. as they happen because lupus, one of the things is you can be feeling fine and great one day mm -hmm. and then the next, you know, maybe next week you have a flare-up and a flare-up wow. is where something goes wrong and all of a sudden you're not feeling well. And then here you go again, right. and you're having another flare-up. One of the things about lupus, it's from mild to, severe. to chronic with this disease. I mean, you could have mild. I mean, there's there's three types of lupus. We have um, where some people just may have one thing wrong with them. Mm -hmm. You may have the butterfly rash on your face where you can't get out in the sun. Um, for instance, I don't have it where I get the rash. I can go out in the sun, I can, you know, and it doesn't bother me. Um, then there's the systemic um, lupus, which is what I have. Okay. And that's the one that eats at the tissues, your immune system goes against you, um, where I have a seizure disorder, I have a pacemaker, I have a trach. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's tearing up my organs. Um, as opposed to, um, you know, your normal body, it, it's fighting for you. So, and then there's also the one that's drug endures, where right. you take certain medicine. And it affects something else. And it affects something else, but basically those medicines, when you read it on the, um, when they do the testing, it'll show you have lupus, mm -hmm. and it'll give you those side effects of okay. lupus. So. Those are the three things that um, causes lupus. You get and skin sores, rashes, mm -hmm. hair loss. Hair loss is a big one. 
a mm -hmm. very big one. Um, a lot of people, I mean, and, I, and I've seen where just chunks of hair just coming out right. at a time. And then depending on what type of treatment and medication you're on, okay. it's gonna cause your hair to fall. Okay. So that is, that, that's another thing, hair loss. Um, I mean, there's so many symptoms. And it's no cure. In no the cure. And one of the things we want is a lot of people keep it hush when they do have it, or they don't know what it really is that they have. Right. And um, so we want to make sure that people are aware. And, and that's what this organization is doing. Yes. Is making them more aware of what their disease is and how to handle it or even to, to be able to detect it because it's done through blood work and even that you have to do multiple and um, get these doctors and force them, look, I'm not right and be very persistent with them to know, you know, find out and keep doing the blood work. And we started this um, 2011. We started having a support group uh, at the King Center here in Lafayette. That's the Martin Luther King Center. We meet the third Thursday of the month at five o'clock. Everyone is invited to come over. If you have lupus, if you had someone that passed away with lupus, a family member, or just if you want information on yourself, we sit around, uh, we introduce ourselves, but we get into bond with each other because we meet every month now. We became a family. Right. And we just share, listen to their stories. You know, some used to come in, some do come in, and uh, it's like, you know, I don't take my medicine anymore. And we're looking at each other like, whoa, you know, is that a good sign? She said, well, I feel good. But then listening to the other patients and the clients that has lupus, and they say, you know, that's not a good thing. You need to continue taking right. your medicine, continue going to your doctors, no matter if you feel good or not. You know, and then they come back and they say, you know what, I started taking my medicine and I feel much better. <laughs> so we try to uplift each other. Right. Uh, it's, we have guest speakers that comes in, people that has lupus, it might be their profession as nurses. Uh, we thank Louise. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, she, Louise uh, Broussard. Louise Broussard, oh, she did an awesome job. Very we uplifting. Had, right, we did a workshop and uh, she was on target. She mm -hmm. was on target. Uh, we had question and answers. We had people came as far as Denham Springs, and we praying for y'all because we know the weather, weather hit is bad over there. Young. Yes, Wanda and Rosalind and Miss Henrietta them. Um, but that workshop was awesome. So we bring in professional people uh, for the question and answers, and uh, as we learn ourselves, and uh, we also get information from the Lupus National Office. They send out pamphlets and we distribute them. We go over question and answers. Um, some of them have the same doctors that right, you have. Right. You know, after we start mingling and talking with each other, some of them have the same doctor. Some of them mm -hmm. goes to the same doctor. Some goes to some in Baton Rouge. You know, but every year we put on an event, a huge event, because we're doing something every month for and Before them. you go into that, I want to just let everyone know tomorrow, at five o'clock, we have the meeting that she was just speaking of right. at the King Center. Correct. So that's tomorrow at five. We welcome you to come in. If you don't want to speak, you just want to listen, you're welcome to do that. If you want to share your story, you're welcome to do that also. We mm -hmm. only meet an hour. A lot of times, it's not a lot of paperwork we're doing. We might do puzzling just to get the mind right. And I like time. I'm like, y'all got two minutes to do this. And they're like, come on, we need more time. But you know, it's just, just having fun, you know, having fun with that. Mm -hmm. So that's tomorrow, uh, five, five o'clock at the King Center here in Lafayette. And uh, you're welcome to come. Cora 309 Cora Street 309. here in Lafayette, the Martin Luther King Center. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. our big event that's coming up. It's a big event that we want to invite the public to um, September 25th, come on in, September 25th here in Lafayette at the warehouse. The address is 535 Garfield, uh, it's the warehouse building. Uh, let's, you want to pull it up? Mm -hmm. Let's see what's going on, let's see here. If you can see it, you know, we have so many musicians coming in. Uh, to present this in kind service. We have Major Handy. It's called the All America 
mini mm -hmm. music fests. First of first of a kind. Um, Major Handy, a Zydeco band, Louisiana band that plays blues and Zydeco. Uh, he will be performing his band. We have Carol the, Fran, the uh, legendary Carol Fran, which is from here, right here in Lafayette. Right here in Lafayette. Hi, Miss Carol. How you doing? She's been around for a long um, time. Um, jazz and blues. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have the Duchess, Vinsburg, Mississippi. The Duchess, uh, a blues singer, young blues singer. And um, Pat Wilder, mm -hmm. he plays the guitar. He's coming in from California. And uh, Uncle Fawley, who's my brother, little brother, uh, Southern Soul, Swing Out Man, mm -hmm. and Imani Scott. Yes. Uh, that's a hip hop artist. He's uh, coming in from Houston. From Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. We added uh, Steve Adams. Steve Adams. Um, out of New Orleans. He's been around for a very long time. Very good singer, very good um, band. Um, he has um, blues, old school, um, way back. Oh, we he went does, and listened to him the other night. He can at do the Tyrone Legends. Davis. He can do. Oh my goodness gracious! You name it, he can do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was playing at Legends the other night off of yes. uh, Republican Collies, and I sat on with him and. Uh, he started playing some Southern Soul and some first, blues. First song oh was The Thrill Is Gone. Yes, it is. <laughs> and uh, the headliner for the show to all our listening artists is Mr. Kenny Neal, the blues man himself, uh, by way of California, but from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, blues man, Kenny Neal. Kenny Neal. And he's bringing his family, his whole family. His whole family. family. And his father was a blues musician. Yes. Raphael, yeah. Raphael. Neil, yeah. if anyone knows who that is. So, and we have so many sponsors, uh, KDN Open Channel, LUS Fiber, Fiber, the Lafayette Tourist Center, we have Magical Dream, we have Andrew Senegal Construction, Bernadette Castile over in Cancer Organization, a good friend of ours, both of ours, who also has lupus, Alzina Durrell with Se Seasons of Green Leaf, Weatherford Academy out of the West Bank, Louisiana. I mean, the radio it, state, the other radio oh, so many radio stations that want to help us and put the word out. KIEE, mm -hmm. uh, 95.5, uh, KPL. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, Miss Becky Shakespeare, we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And um, Connie, what's her name? Like? Who? Who else Connie, we have? Connie from the uh, radio station. She's been helping. Miss Connie, also from the radio station. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, we're gonna go Ms. on with Robin. some more. We have a Connie and Miss Robin. Robin. <laughs> and uh, I think we have another lupus. We patient. have another lupus patient that's, that's gonna here. Be with us. And Natasha, she wanna you wanna come on in? Come, come on, on in. in. We're gonna make some room for you. <laughs> but uh, again, we're going over. It's a lupus benefit. Pass right here. We're gonna sit right here with us. We got space. Uh, talking to two lupus patients here, and uh, come on in. How are y'all? All right, how are you? You made it, girl? Yes, ma'am. It was the rain, and then I got a flare-up out of the the blue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's 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 kind of struggle today. But you made it. Yes, ma'am. made it. And you're looking good. Thank and you. that's what we're trying to tell the public. Some people, like you guys, are suffering with the lupus, and just if you don't know that, you can't tell. Yes. So if you want to share your story, uh, whatever you want to say, they're out there listening. We want to promote our lupus benefit. Okay. But if you want to share with how your days go, you know. Well. Um, and it's Latasha Benson Lee. Lee. <laughs> Latasha. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm a native of Lawtel, Louisiana, and um, I was diagnosed with lupus. Um, uh, after my first son was born, okay, which is 17 years ago. Okay, that's um, almost like yours. Mine, you? yes, 17. Okay. <laughs> right, right. And uh, they didn't, they mis misdiagnosed me a lot. They didn't know what it was because, you know, back then they didn't have, you know, a lot of patients with that, and they didn't understand what was going on. Okay. So I went to doctors and doctors, and um, the only way they uh, can. Um, kind of detect what lupus is, is by flare-ups. By flare-ups. Because that's when they run the test and it's all sky high or okay, like right. that. Mm -hmm. So after being diagnosed, um, I did my treatments um, and then kind of, I went into a rem uh, remission like 
y'all would know. Mm-hmm. And a couple of years, I did really well. I went to school, worked, and all of a sudden, man, came back again. Came again. And like I got really um, in a deep depression. Um, I was a real spiritual person, but I was kind of questioning why me, mm-hmm. you know. And if you're not rooted in the world, you know, why, you know, people nowadays, why not you? Because Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, you know, we, he didn't been through so much. But now I have learned to accept it. And um, just, uh, you know, advice to everybody um, with lupus, um, don't let anyone discourage you. Um, a lot of people will be like, oh, you don't look sick. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing they say. Yes. Mm-hmm. What sick look like? You know, I don't want to go around just half <laughs> dressed or, you know, my head, you know, nothing. I just want to be normal. So, uh, you know, you won't ever see me looking like I have pain. Like now I'm walking with my cane, mm-hmm. but I'm just going to steal my tire. You know, I want to mm-hmm. be presentable at times, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't want anyone... Um, I don't like a pity party. Like I said, I like to uh, help in the in the community, mm-hmm. like with what, what y'all doing and with the great um, second harvest. Yeah, second yes. harvest, and with the four sisters. I mean, I love all that. You know, anytime somebody needs me, I am there because I want to show everybody. Just because Lupus has me, I'm not gonna let that hinder me right. at and, all. And that's what I admire about you, ladies. Y'all give me strength and my sisters strength. To look at y'all, the things that y'all do, y'all don't let it keep y'all down. No, you know, don't want to lay down to the disease. No. Right, and I understand sometimes it's hard for you guys to get out of the bed. It might take oh, time. Yes. You know, I can remember when we went on vacation and you we stayed together and you like, don't mind me in the morning because sometimes it's hard for me to get out of my bed and I'm looking at you like, you all right? You okay? <laughs> but you did awesome. Mm-hmm. You did awesome. But uh, hang around positive people. Right. That's true. And the negative's going to come around, but you have to push it away. And God put people in your place for a reason and a season. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that season get up and you meet new people. That's true. You know, and it's a good thing. Um, it's just so much to tell and talk about mm-hmm. lupus. For a long time, nobody talked about it. Mm-hmm. So when we say it, we need to make an awareness group, invite whoever want to come in and sit down. If you don't want to talk at all, you just want to listen. You know, some come and some don't come back, mm-hmm. and they tell you, I'm coming, I just had a flare-up. Yes. We can understand that. <laughs> right. You you know, you have flares up, but you have little ones that you need to tend to yes, also. Ma'am. So it's like, you know, I can't get mad because I know, I know my mom's, I went through that. Mm-hmm. We felt the pain. We were young at the time when she passed away at 30. We didn't know what was going on. But my second mom, my stepmom, and we never did call her stepmom, but my second mom, mm-hmm. who we lived with for 40 something years, she had it. She had diabetes. She, everything was falling apart. Right. You know, and I'm like, well, mom, you had lupus. We got to have all this. It's just so much was going on. The medicine, why are you taking this medicine if it's yeah. affecting this medicine? So I, we lived through it. And it's no fun and game. And I see a lot of people don't know with lupus triggers on all these other diseases. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. And what one medicine might help it mess up mess something up. else. Yeah. So I, you know, sometimes they're kind of discouraging. Like when yeah. I'm a win, you know, when you I'm want to take my break. this medicine, I'm kind of scared to yeah. take this, this medicine. One, right. <laughs> might right. this one. I'm right. like, right. you're taking a chance. Yeah. Right. And then you have some family members that really don't understand. Oh, they're like, wow. well, why you got to take this medicine? Yes. Do you have to take this medicine? Why don't right. you just take the pain or what? Well, the pain is not something that. I mean, that's just say, okay, let's take the pain. I mean, it's very, I mean, it's painful, very painful. And I'm talking from hands, feet, oh, you yes. know, the whole body. Right. You know, right. I sit down for a certain amount of time. I can't get up. You know, it's just everything. It affects the hands too, because my mom sometimes yes, couldn't. They're starting to her turn. Shirts, right. right. And, and I'm like, Mama, what's point? going on? She said, that's arthritis. She used to just say arthritis, but they had another word. It was rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid yeah. arthritis. You know? Right. And I don't think when we were growing up as babies, you know, we knew it was lupus. We really didn't know. Right. But I remember my mom was doing my hair, and I used to sit between her leg, mm-hmm. and uh, she used to put her hand. And right hair had some black scabs. Mm. Didn't know what it was. It like alligator skin. Mm-hmm. And that was a sign. That I was a rash. Right. But as I said, we were young and we didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
neighbors across the street who's deceased now, but when we was growing up, they said, oh, we used to comb your hair. Your mama couldn't even comb your hair. But we didn't comb this one because this one had some bad hair. We combed this one because they had good hair. And we laughed about it for years and we talk about it still today. But mm -hmm. the neighbors got together and helped. Right. You know. That's right. And you know, and I applaud my father for keeping six mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. because and then my, and then he got married. I'm like, what woman in their mind will take a man with six children? <laughs> but it was love and we learned to love her. Of course we wanted our mom to still be there. But we learned because we had her for 40 something years mm -hmm. and we, we bonded and her too passed away with lupus. Yes. So and when the doctor found that he said he has never buried a man with two wives with the same sickness. Yes. You know? But lupus needs to be talked about. Yes. It needs to be shared, either emails, support groups, conventions, conference, workshops. Right. Talk about it. Yes. That is one of the, it, it's a silent um, disease that a lot of people mm -hmm. don't talk about. Right. And when they have it, they don't talk about it. And one of the things is a lot of people that see people that have lupus, they don't really believe that there's something really wrong oh, with them. Yes. Right. So they um, think you're faking. You yes. Think, all and you don't want to clean the house because you, or nothing wrong with you. Right. Yeah. You know, because you lay in the bed where you're really hurting and your body just, and my word is shut down. My body shuts down. And it can't go. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, when and then that you can happens, go for days doing good, right. dancing and dancing, having fun. Having fun. Yeah. And then it just brings you down. And yeah. Then, <laughs> and, um, and those are called flares. Mm -hmm. and, and like she said, um, as far as blood work, the only way they're going to have it where you have a flare and they'll be able to detect. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your blood works looks really good. Mm -hmm. Or they're giving you the medicines for the, um, to control the lupus. Mm -hmm. And so your blood work's not gonna look like they're all as bad, but if you were to stop taking those medicines like the Plaquenil, yeah. if you stop taking it, then your blood work's gonna wind up looking bad and showing that you have, cause they'll put you on some medicines and continue to take it. Oh, you look good, everything looks good. Mm -hmm. I mean, no matter what, my a a is always off, but um, and they, we right, but mm -hmm. we try to share in the support group or talking with people that has lupus. Just because you have lupus, don't give up your dreams. No. If you have goals and dreams, oh, continue yes. that. Yes. Continue that because it's you have to have have faith in you to say it. I'm gonna. It's gonna go on. It's gonna mm -hmm. continue. What I did was I made me a bucket list. And, and you scratching it off as you yes, I'm, yes, I have one more. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I there's a lot of things I couldn't do because I was sick. I, I couldn't finish school, which I have one uh, class left, and I'll be graduating in the fall. Yes. Yeah. Um, Proud of you. Yes, ma'am. And I, I wanted to do a lot in the community. I dance. I teach um, dancing as Spirit well. Spiritual dance. I see that. And, you know, a lot of times I can't, you know, and they understand. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people mm -hmm. you got to get with positive people. Right. And, and, and uh, you know, some people may not understand where you're coming from. But like you said, you know, just uh, seasons where people season. come and go. Mm -hmm. But Friends I mean, and family members. Mm -hmm. Yes. Friends yes. Because, I mean, a lot of family, I mean, they don't, they said, well, Tasha, we didn't know it was that bad, right. you know, and I have, you know, a real cousin, her name, Tiff, Tiffany, she's, she's really there for everything, like, I really go through my mom, you know, they are, like, all the, the rest of them, like, really there to see, I know what you're going through, mm -hmm. remember my bedside, my oldest, he's, you know, mom, you need something, you know, it's those people you need to keep around, around. and yeah. I, I tell them all the time, I don't want to lose y'all, what I'm going to do without these positive people, right? you know, and I did want to ask a question, um, Ms. Brenda, because I have little ones. Mm -hmm. How did you guys feel like mentally seeing your parents, y y your mom go through all that? Because well, I'll be wondering what's going on in my kid's head. But we were young and uh, my brother, Uncle Farley, he was like two years old. And we talk about it today and say, do you remember mama? She said, not that much because he had asthma. Mm -hmm. And he stayed home a lot, but you know we saw her in bed a lot. But you know we had to be quiet, so yeah. dad's like, "Be quiet, mama don't feel good." But we really didn't know what she was had. You know the oldest one was eleven, then it was ten, then eight, then six, then you know going down. But you know, a long time ago, they used to shh, 
Don't ask no questions. We couldn't ask no questions. <laughs> Big people talking. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they were saying some words that we never heard. Like like today, they might say dementia, but a long time ago it was senile. Oh, they crazy. It's senile. Yes. You know, they was right. using some different words. What I'm going to do for you is I'm going to give you my daughter's number. Okay. Because I know that we were doing another interview mm -hmm. and um, on the radio mm -hmm. station. And um, while we were there, she... Um, she was she looking called. at it from Birmingham right. online right. on the computer. Okay. The and she called in and actually gave her side of the story. As a child. As a child. Yes. 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 So if you're wondering about how that works, I can give you my daughter's number. Oh, that'd be great. And she will tell you her side as a child. Yes. I don't remember what she said because I started crying. <laughs> <laughs> She yeah. said she saw you down on the floor she, and it was it, hard, you know, she was there. She, she was, was there and saw and it all. She saw me having the seizures or, mm -hmm. you know, when I... Living with it. Living yeah. with it. And as a matter of fact, she helped a lot as a very little kid, mm -hmm. you know, going through it. So. But you want to tell them that, like Shelly explained it very well, mm -hmm. We all have to die. The dogs die, the chicken die, cats die, daddy got to die one day, mama going to die. We just have to prepare ourselves. Prepare them, prepare, prepare ourselves, because we all have a date. You know, I we mean, just don't know when. We don't know when it is. I mean, it could be when we walk out the door. It could have been like me yesterday where I started aspirating. Right. And my throat closed. I couldn't breathe. Oh, wow. They had to stick me with the EpiPen. So um, it could be... It could have been yesterday had right. I not been in the doctor's office. And that's where she was. And that's where I happened right. to be. Yes. But I wasn't supposed to be there. I was supposed to take the test and leave. Oh, wow. And See. I just happened to have another doctor's appointment next door. Mm -hmm. So I left that doctor's appointment to go into the other doctor's appointment. I mean, to, into the other office and said, something's going, you know. Yes. Well, actually, I just walked in the door and they all, you they know. Could have seen. They, could, they could see. They could see. And they all piled up on me. But... The point is, it could be any day, mm -hmm. you know, we yeah. don't know. No. So, and, and that that's the same thing I, um, we want to let them know, is that lupus has no age, no, no date when it can take you. Mm -hmm. I mean, seven, how old are you now? 38. Se 17 years. Mm -hmm. That was at a young age. Yes. Sir. Yeah, and I posted on my Facebook page around five young girls that shared these stories. Mm -hmm. They was in their twenties, and if you read their stories, you swear they were some older people, mm -hmm. but yeah. they were young, yes. right? And but they living with it, and they going on with their life, some in college and everything, but they shared it, and you know, you just you don't know these people because they just want to support you, with you, and you teary eye because you be so young, you know. Right. I'm old enough to be their mom, and it's just. It's, it's young children have lupus. Men have lupus. Men yes. Have lupus. You know, and I learned that too. It has no discrimination. Right. The only thing is, there is a majority. It starts from the age of around 14, um, the majority. Mm -hmm. 14 to, I think, 44, something like that, that the majority of women mm -hmm. have it. Now, there is men that have it as well, just not as much as women. Then the other statistic is African-American women mm -hmm. have it more than Caucasian. Mm -hmm. So um, that is another statistic. So that we need to keep that in mind as... And they ask if it's hereditary. They, My doctor is saying, as of now, mm -hmm. it's not, but... I, it's prevalent in my family. I mean, from two aunts. First cousins. First cousins. I mean, you know, it's there. Mm -hmm. It's there in the family. And like I said, it attacks all things. D isn't it attacking your kidneys? Yes, ma'am. Her kidneys yes. um, is being attacked. Me, it's my brain, mm -hmm. my lungs, Lord. but her, um, your it's kidneys. kidneys. And there's is there some function of, they call it a brain fog. Uh-huh. Oh, and yeah. And I lose things, and I don't, I can't recall where I put it at. So mm -hmm. I have to, or if something is going, I have to set a reminder on my phone, a timer, mm -hmm. to remind me. Mm -hmm. Because right. I don't remember half of the things that goes on. Or riding around Lafayette, and you don't know where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I'm riding with her, and I'm like, 
Let me drive. Let me drive. <laughs> because I mean, so sometimes she just looks space, but she went, I'm fine, I'm fine. But she tells me that all the time she's fine. Yes. But I'm looking at it out of the way, you just relax, I'll be driving Miss Daisy today. <laughs> so, it's all good. You know, we just gotta help each other out, call and check on each other's. You know, yes. we have a list of our friends' phone numbers. You're not calling to be nosy. You know, I don't want you to continue to call them all day because sometimes they want to rest <laughs> and uh, just call in to check, check on, on you, you know. Right. That's um, what now, the thing is, I wanted to also mention with lupus, there's a lot of people with lupus that can't work any longer. Yes. Um, can't work. Mm -hmm. I know I can't work. I mean, I tried working. I worked for a long time and then at some point they were like okay you you know I keep having seizures at the on the job Same. you get sick <laughs> on the job you know and if I was to try to go back to get a job mm -hmm. I'm not gonna like, keep it because of the fact that I'm you, get, you know, know you, you don't know okay. I mean when I'm gonna get sick again when I'm gonna have another seizure my flare-up you don't know and um, we depend on our benefits and one of the reasons we're having this benefit is to be able to give back scholarships to the, you know, lupus patients. And I mean, it's very, very expensive. Oh, the medicines. Yes. The medicines, the doctor appointments. Most lupus patients have internal medicine um, doctor, they have a kidney doctor, mm. they have a rheumatologist. I mean, the list goes on. You, you have a pulmonologist, you have, um, I have a urologist, um, neurologist, <laughs> I have a neurologist, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, I have a psychiatrist, Me you too. have to, yes. Yes. you yes. have to, yes. because yes. it's something that brings you down, and you have to be able to talk to someone, and just let it all out, um, and these things are, you know, it costs to have all these doctors, but not only that, the medicines they cost. Mm -hmm. um, you you wind up having plenty of medicines. I mean, one every doctor gives you a medicine, you may, and every doctor may give you more than one mm -hmm. medicine, and so that costs. And then your treatments. Yes. Your treatments. Right. And right I, now, I had um, my doctor was giving because I was paying everything cash. Mm -hmm. After I quit working, I didn't have no insurance. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's a process of getting help and right. all that good stuff. Right. So um, I got my medical help, but I didn't know you, there was medicine yet to get. You know, with that help as well. Right. So my doctor, they was real great of giving me um, samples. Well, it came to a point where the reps wasn't sending the correct medicines right. that I needed. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, okay, we got a $300 shots I have to take. Right. You know, what, you know, we got to start budgeting, you know, we got kids and that's when, you know, depression comes on because right. you have your children, you have your household and people don't understand that and everybody, you know, you know, uh, they be like, you know, maybe, you know, this person just won't. No, it's not that. I cannot afford it. And then right. if I can't do something, sometimes they get mad and, you know, but I, I stay prayerful. Like you said, the seasonal people. Right. I mean, if you don't understand, I'm to a point to where I'm just staying around the positive. Right. I have an 80, you know, she does the, the um, my Charlene, she does the, the vitamins and stuff. And mm -hmm. that kind of helps because I really, um, that's another thing. You got to watch out, you know. I was sure, those right to say, so check with your doctor first, first yes. take it. and then yes, mm -hmm. and I, I find um, some of that you know help as well. But it's the medication is so high, like mm -hmm. I just can't. You know, I get depressed sometimes just thinking about it. You know, you know when I'm gonna get that help because sometimes you know, which you know, with my husband he has VA, or they'll be like, okay, he has this money, you have this money, y'all can't get the benefits. Right. So now we have to pay cash for everything. Yes. So, I mean, a lot of people don't understand what we go through, not just physically, mentally, you know, financially, it's, financially, it's, right. it's a depression, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, uh, yes, every year, every year, we, since 2011, we've been hosting some fundraisers, like Shelly mentioned, and it's either for our personal use mm -hmm. or medical use, however you want to use it. We do have a web page that we want you to go out it's a scholarship form. You can fill it out. 
the web page is four, number four, A as an Apple, sistersLupus.com. That's our web page. Fill out the application, turn it in, and uh, by September 25th, for our fundraiser, I'm gonna pull it up again. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's all American America Mini Music mm -hmm. Fest, set for September the 25th here in Lafayette at the Warehouse. The address is 535 Garfield. We have musicians flying in from as far as California. We have Major Handy in the Louisiana Band. Major Handy plays Zydeco and Blues. He's been around for a long time. And we want to say some prayers for him because he gets flooded in in his uh, auto shop. He has a, he take care of cars and stuff. Mm -hmm. So he would have been here with us. And uh, his wife Frances sent a message. So we're going to be saying prayers for you guys. We have Carol Fran, who is a legendary, a living legend here in Louisiana, right here in Lafayette, 80-something years old. She done travel all over the world. Mm -hmm. Carol plays jazz and blues and sang with most of the highest band from New Zealand, Switzerland, Canada, everywhere. She said, whatever you need me, she'll be there. We have the Duchess. Uh, she's coming out of Pittsburgh, Mississippi, a young blues artist. Met her at the Just Blues in Memphis, Tennessee. We've been friends ever since. And uh, she will be performing also. Pat Wilder. Pat has plays the guitar out of California. She's trying to make her way down here. Uncle Folly, the swing out guru, my youngest brother. Also a city fireman. And uh, he will be performing as well. Imani Scott, a young hip hop artist out of Houston, Texas, blowing up Houston, Texas. Uh, that's one of my brother's daughter. Uh, she does it all. And we added Steve Adams. Steve Adams Band. Uh, we listened to Steve recently at Legends Pubs off of Collie Saloon during the week. The band is awesome. He's going to turn it out. And um, he don't mind doing an in-kind service for us. And our um, headliner. headliner for the show is Mr. Kenny Neal, a blues singer, again, went all over the world, Grammy. 17 CDs. 17 CDs, uh, played everywhere, and they got they 10 sisters and brothers. Uh, I believe they lost one, Miss Jackie. But he said he's bringing the rest. He's going to bring the whole family down. Mm -hmm. And he was recently here last month. He performed for us. Um, with his guitar and he plays a harmonica. They play it all. The Neal Brothers plays it all. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of sponsors. A lot of people wants to help put this blues, jazz, hip hop, swing out, R and B, music fest together. <coughs> and we have a can Acadian Open Channel, been playing our videos and promotion throughout the month. Uh, LUS Fiber will be assisting. Also, if you have LUS Fiber, that's channel three and four. Acadian Open Channel, that's on 15 and 16. Weatherford Academy, that's a family owned, my sister and her husband. That's out of the West Bank, uh, West Wego. Uh, West Wego, Louisiana, that's a academy for kids. Season the Green Leaf, another friend of ours, uh, also suffer with lupus, Alzina Durrell big supporter. Uh, Bernadette Castile, Overan Cancer, with her organization supporting us. Magical Dream is myself and Peggy Andrus, where we put on pageants and other events for the kids. Uh, who else we have? Andrew Senegal, construction, and uh, we had another one, let's see. We have uh, Don Mitchell's printing company. Mm -hmm. Then we have these radio stations also. Uh, KIE is a big, uh, had us on his show this week. Um, we talked for about 30 minutes. You know, everybody want to help us. We have Miss Robin with um, 94.5 and KI, uh, KPL and the list goes on. The list goes on. 
Miss Becky Shakespeare, she's a big supporter. Ann Bruce, one of my friends with Laughing Commission Needs of Women, uh, they're going to be having a table also. We thank you, Sally, Sally Dowling, um, Bernadette going to be buying a ticket. I mean, Miss Peggy Andrews bought a ticket. Uh, we have a page where you can purchase tickets. Can you say it again? Okay, that's number four of four, A as an apple, sisters, lupus, dot com. You can buy a table of six, that's six tickets, water, soda, and ice, plus the table. Uh, you can get all that on online. And also a table of four. So we have a lot of people buying tables. You can also buy single tickets. Tell your friend if you like music, if you like all sorts of music. Okay, so we're going to have a girl of all kind of music. And it's a lupus benefit. Fill out the forms, scholarship forms. Me and my sister is going to go over them, and uh, we will be presenting the scholarships that day of. And they are going to lupus patients. Right. Um, and that does help with their... Personal or medical. Mm -hmm. Right. Expenses. Yes. And like I said, they are very expensive. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, we just had to put the word out there. And uh, for closing, I mean, we got about nine more minutes, but um, do y'all want to share anything, anything else? Again, we meet tomorrow. If y'all can make yes. it tomorrow, mm -hmm. tomorrow at 5 <laughs> at the mm -hmm. Martin Luther King Center at 5 o'clock. The address is 309 Cora Street. We welcome you to come sit on in, share your story, ask questions. Um, we're going to be there for one hour. It's not long. I know a lot of people, it's busy. I have a lot of meetings I got to scratch off because I'm going here and scratch off because <laughs> I'm going there. And uh, we can't make it all, but if you just want to come for a little while, you're welcome to do so also. Uh, get me up on Facebook. My name is Brenda Andrews, better known as Busy B. That's me. Shelly, Shelly Sawyer oh, yeah. on Facebook. And La Latasha Benson, Benson Lee. Lee. She's mm -hmm. on Facebook. And if you know of anybody that has lupus, let us know. Inbox us because we don't mm -hmm. know everybody. Right. Uh, there's a group in St. Martinville. We welcome you to come on in. There's a group in Opelousas, uh, yes. Corey doing a good job out there, and LaDavia, some friends of ours. Um, maybe we can combine one time and have a big fundraiser. Right. But um, the more you, to, to me, the more people that get together and put their heads together, Yes. You just can imagine what, power, what we can do. The power, yeah. Right. It, absolutely. Right. absolutely. I know we can't service everybody, but if we can service somebody, mm -hmm. I know my mom's in heaven looking down on us right. saying, y'all right. still busy. Been right. busy, busy, busy. <laughs> right. But uh, it's all about, uh, it's it's no money to us. It's not a money-making thing because we, we give the money back. Uh, we do this the kindness of our heart, me and my sisters, Gail who is a nurse at Lourdes, and she ready to retire and hang with me. Uh, and she can't be all the places that I go because I'm retired now. But Gail is a nurse, and she loves dealing with the lupus and learning, and she know more than some of us. And my sister in the service uh, just became master sergeant, and um, she's in Birmingham, but she's coming down for this event. and. Um, but she's doing her thing up there too, promoting it and Alzheimer's disease. And also my sister Martha, who runs her own academy in West uh, Wego. But they're planning on being there the day of. It's a family thing. We have friends, Elizabeth Richard, Yvonne Wilkins. That's my backbones, you know. Uh, Bernie, Peggy, Shelly, Miss Lee, you know, we're all working together. We all working for this same cause, right. just helping each other and just learning. Read, read, read. And it's you'd be surprised how many are around you that have lupus and will not say it. Yes. Right. I mean, just when I tell someone I have lupus, and I am just just shocked on how many people I've ran into that says. Wow, I know some, you know, my, my sister has lupus. Mm -hmm. Or I have lupus too, you know, and 
I never you wouldn't would, have said if it I first. would not have said it, <laughs> they would not have mentioned right. it. Right. And um, even in my doctor's appointment yesterday, um, you know, we were talking about it, and 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 I was with one of the nurses, and we were talking about one of the guys that because I was trying to see if she would like to attend. And when I mentioned Steve Adams, she goes, "Oh, <laughs> I'm coming." <laughs> and um, I told thing. her it was for lupus, and she goes, "Oh, wow, right. my sister." has lupus wow. you know yeah. and I will support that you know plus Steve Adams you know and she was like major handy I'm coming yes. so she goes I'm gonna I want a table I want a table so you know you just the hush hush of people that have it that are not speaking and will not tell you you know so you'd be surprised if you just mentioned to somebody about lupus how many out there that that does have it right. and will not speak about it. Right. And, and at the warehouse, uh, also at the event, uh, it's, they're going to have a cash bar. It's $15 to get in uh, with the ticket and 20 at the door. Also, the people that has the table, we will supply the water, ice, and soda, and you get the drinks at the bar. But we also have vendors. Jamika Andrus, a cousin of mine, they live in Dallas who's going to be barbecuing, uh, and she's going to be opening her lupus uh, event here, uh, a group here, and it's the Motor Mary, you know, because, mm -hmm. we, again, we can't service everyone. Well, her and her dad, June Andrews, my cousin, they're going to be barbecuing. We have Miss Janice, Janice, from New Orleans, uh, going to be cooking and stuff. So if you know of anyone that want to do a vendor booth, my number is 337-258-1666, Inbox me on Facebook. Go to my webpage, 4A Sisters Lupus Club, lupus.com. I'm sorry. Inbox me, email me, Brenda underscore Andrus at yahoo.com. I'm here to answer your question. If I don't know the answer, I promise you, Busy B will find out. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank all the supporters, everyone that want to help, saying this is a good thing what y'all doing. Um, my family, especially supporting this, um, Kenny Neal, coming from California, but he's going to be living, moving back to Baton Rouge, bringing his whole family to do this. Um, all these musicians for in kind service, yes. we couldn't put this on without uh, without, without them. Yes, without them. absolutely. And then the sponsor, when we go and we call them and tell them about it, and if you want to sponsor, also hit me up. Um, we're still taking sponsorships. Mm -hmm. Again, the money's to go back into the community. You fill out an application on my online, and um, it's going to be given back. Mm -hmm. Right. So this was awesome. It was, <laughs> yeah. And you was trying to make it, and you made it yes, on time. Yeah. And the rain, I was. It's still raining. Oh, yes, pouring oh out there. Okay. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> but uh, again, uh, today we made it here. But we're going to take our time and just silent at this time to um, ask God to bless everyone that's flooded out, yes. nowhere to go, being in shelters for the first time in their lives, uh, don't know which way to go, but there's hope. And God knows what's going on. And continue to pray for these people. Mm -hmm. And Acadiana, we are bonding together. Let's work together. Continue to do that. That's what we do. And we're going to pull through out of this. Mm -hmm. And if you can volunteer in any shelter, they're looking for people that does clerical work, people to help serve food, people to help undo do the bags that comes in, you know, to be distributed. There's many shelters here in the city that's looking for volunteers. Mm -hmm. Give up your time. If you can do it for an hour, that's what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, that's about it. This was, we was talking on lupus. It's a hush hush, but we're gonna make it aware yes. and mm -hmm. uh, share yeah. what you know. You know, if you know something that we don't know, share it. Come to our meetings, call us, let us know what it's about. Right, right, right. Yes. And I appreciate you, Miss Shelley, my good friend, and Latasha. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank y'all for coming in and uh, speaking and sharing y'all stories. And Anytime. I want to thank you guys because all before, I mean, I was kind of. And that's, it's kind of shame to talk about what I was going through. And ever since I had moved to Lafayette, meeting you guys, 
getting exposure to what's going on and meeting others with lupus and seeing what they're going through made me want to, you know, advocate, you know, advocate more to right, others, you right. know, and tell and them the what I was group. That's another generation. Yes, yes it is. Don't be shy about it. Um, you know, a long time ago when I wanted, I joined several organizations, the older people used to say, sit down, baby. Don't talk right now. Wait your turn. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I've learned to see. <laughs> see what you want Raise to up say. your hand and say, excuse me, I don't understand this. I need to know what's going on. <laughs> Ask your question. Right. Yes. Don't right. be shy to talk. And um, mm -hmm. and I thank you. Thank right. you for tuning in. Tuning in. Until That's right. next time, we appreciate you. <laughs> yes. Very much. Thank you. We gonna uh, they gonna cut it off. They gonna cut it off. Mm -hmm. And we gonna stay until it's zero, and then. But it was good. It was good. Yeah. Very good. Yes. We gonna let you know earlier for next time, um, so we can do it again. Cause we're gonna do it again. Okay. Better than not have.